A week ago, we thought the oldest living land organism was 5,000 years old. A week ago, we thought the oldest living ocean organism was 11,000 years old. That was a week ago. A lot's changed in a week. Okay, for those who don't read the PLOS Genetics Journal or seen any of the headlines, we humanity revived a 46,000 year old worm. How? Why? How is this possible? Is it going to kill us? Is humanity doomed? <clears throat> Well, this, this nematode probably won't kill us, but many other things that came with will. Okay, let me take a step back. Where did this all start? How did we come across this worm, let alone revive it? Well, as the story goes, we were kind of looking for it, mainly because humans specifically are super obsessed with reviving things frozen in ice caps for millions of years. Which, okay, I mean... It's kind of cool. And the main reason, of course, we are studying these fields is to understand whether or not eternal life can be replicated for us and our bodies. That's an entirely different conflict you guys can debate about in the comments down below, but I'm... I'm here for the worm. So this study started around five years ago, back in 2018, when it was all kind of kept on the down low because I guess they didn't want to come out with any unfinished data. But in 2018, a German scientist managed to rehydrate and revive two nematode worms that were essentially frozen in permafrost. Now reviving organisms from a frozen state is already a massive scientific feat. I went over it in one of my other videos, but the main reason it is so difficult to revive frozen organisms is because the water that's inside of a typical organism body will crystallize and damage cells and other extremely important parts of the body. Which is one of the main reasons we can't just freeze people and unfreeze them. For example, reviving something like a tardigrade, one of the most resilient species on the planet after about 30 years frozen in ice is seen as one of the most impressive revivals we've done. So seeing this worm get revived after basically 46,000 years is practically unfathomable. Anyway, Back to the timeline. Basically, after these couple of worms were found and revived, nearly 100 other worms were transported from Russia to German labs to further the research. Now, the research is still going on, of course, but basically they found that the worms are all dated to be about 45 to 47,000 years old. So how exactly were these worms able to survive for that long? And can we replicate some of its characteristics to form our own form of cryosleep? Well, that's kind of the hope. Usually in papers like these, you never really see the scientists make claims about potential human use cases, and they didn't, but there has been a lot of talk between the researchers and the science community about its potential for helping us understand our own forms of cryogenic sleep. Chris Kalia, for example, one of the main researchers from the paper, said himself that the major take-home message or summary of this discovery is that it is, in principle, possible to stop life for more or less an indefinite time and then restart it. That's a crazy thought. We were using typewriters 50 years ago, and now we're talking about reviving 47,000-year-old worms and potentially forming our own version of cryosleep. Let me know what you think about these worms down below, and if you want to see more content just like this, feel free to subscribe, and see you in the next one.